In this lecture, we're going to venture into the fascinating domain of generative AI, artificial intelligence. Now, this technology has applications in diverse areas, from creating original artwork and music to creating um, text. Now, one important note, when I speak about AI or artificial intelligence, I'm often going to use the images of uh, robots. I have them in my illustrations on the screen. I am anthropomorphizing or putting a human face on the technology by having that robot there as a stand-in for AI. But caution, I do not mean to suggest that we will be interacting with real life-size robots anytime soon. Okay, so let's delve into defining artificial intelligence and also human intelligence. So if we think about uh, human intelligence, it's really multifaceted. It encompasses our ability to learn, to reason, problem solve, uh, perceive the world around us, use language, and so much more. AI, or artificial intelligence, involves programming computers, programming them to emulate these aspects of human intelligence. And a computer can be considered to possess artificial intelligence if it can perform tasks such as learning from experience, um, understanding natural human language, or recognizing complex patterns. So let's look at the relationship between a computer and artificial intelligence. Now, the word computer comes from the Latin verb computare, which means to calculate or to count. And before electronic computers were even developed, the com term computer was used to refer to people who perform calculations, often as part of their jobs. Like, for example, in the early 20th century, there were teams of people, most of them, many of them women, known as computers. Uh, they calculated complex mathematical equations, such as those in astronomy or engineering. And in fact, here's a screenshot of an article from the academic journal Technology and Culture, uh, published back in 1999, about the history of such women during World War II. And you may have seen this 2016 film, Hidden Figures, um, that jumps ahead to the 1960s. It chronicles, I think it was Dorothy Vaughn, Mary Jackson, Katherine Johnson. They were uh, women, again, we called them human computers who worked at NASA and helped to put, um, put the United States into space. So there you go, and if you haven't seen the movie, definitely take a look at it. Now, it wasn't until the mid 20th century that the term computer began to be associated with the electronic machines we think of today. These machines were called computers because, like their human counterparts, they were designed to perform calculations. But over time, of course, they evolved to perform many other tasks beyond uh, just calculations. So keep in mind that computer, a computer is a tool that we use to run software programs. It processes input, performs operations, produces output, according to a set of instructions known as, ta-da, computer programs. A computer itself does not make decisions or learn from experience unless it's been programmed to do so. So, artificial intelligence is a field of computer science. It's dedicated to creating systems that display some form of human intelligence. These systems are designed to perform tasks that are really require human intelligence, such as recognizing speech, learning, planning, and understanding natural language. So AI systems are run on computers, but, and this is important, not all programs that run on a computer involve artificial intelligence. It's kind of 
like how a square is a type of rectangle, but not all rectangles are squares. So, in short, if a program can learn from experience, adapt to new inputs, or perform tasks that we normally associate with human intelligence, we say it's a type of AI. So, a computer is a tool, it's a device that processes information, and artificial intelligence, on the other hand, is a feature of software that we run on computers. Okay, so where did the idea of artificial intelligence or AI even come from? Like when did people begin thinking about it? You know, it's really hard to pinpoint a single kind of first person or group of people. In fact, we can even argue that in ancient myths and legends, there are stories of statues that talk or automated servants. But, but let's take a look at Alan, Alan Turing, an innovative mathematician and pioneer of theoretical computer science. In fact, he's often called the father of computer science. Alan Turing also played a significant role in World War II by helping break the German code. More about that at the end of this. But what we're most interested in now is his contribution to the field of AI through what is known as the Turing test. In 1950, Alan Turing published a paper called Computing Machinery and Intelligence. And here's a screenshot of a first edition of that paper. And note that it appeared in Mind, uh, the Mind Journal. It's a scholarly journal, not of mathematicians or mathematics, but a scholarly journal of philosophy. In it, Turing discussed the idea of machines being able to think like humans. And at that time, this was really a revolutionary idea because computers were really basic and nowhere near as powerful or complex as they are today. So the Turing test was a way he proposed to test a machine's ability to exhibit intelligent behavior. But instead of creating a complex mathematical formula or test for the machine, he proposed a very human test namely conversation. Think of it as a game of three players. There's a human judge, a human contestant, and a machine contestant. They're all in separate rooms and they communicate only through text messages. The judge asks questions and both the human and the machine contestants reply. If by the end of this game, the judge cannot reliably tell which contestant is the machine, then the machine is said to have passed the Turing test. Now, when Turing first proposed this, it was totally theoretical. The technology of his time could not create a machine capable of passing such a test, but he was a visionary and he saw the potential for computers to evolve and become more intelligent. However, it's important to note that even today, where we do use the Turing test uh, to test different tools, it doesn't necessarily mean that a computer understands or thinks the same way a human does. It's more about the tool or the program mimicking human responses in a convincing way. Now, before I leave this segment of the lecture, I wanted to mention that there's a movie about Alan Turing, which came out in 2014 called The Imitation Game. It focuses on his development of the Enigma machine, which was used to break German codes and help the Allies to win World War II. So if you haven't seen it, you know, definitely you should. All right, so now let's look on um, the kind of the birth of the term artificial intelligence. So we're moving from Turing's paper of 1950 to 1956. The term artificial intelligence was coined by John McCarthy in 1956 for the Dartmouth Conference, the first academic conference on the subject. And here a group of visionary researchers, including John McCarthy um, and others, 
came together to study artificial intelligence. Now they proposed that, quote, every aspect of learning or any other feature of intelligence can, at least in principle, be so precisely described that a machine can be made to simulate it. So there we have that, the first use of that term in an academic setting. Now, I'm going to review three somewhat technical terms. Generative AI, natural language processing, or NLP, and transformer models. Now, all three of these terms are important when it comes to developing just a basic understanding of how generative AI programs such as ChatGPT came to be. But don't worry, my discussion will be decidedly non-technical. Let's dive into generative AI. Generative AI is a branch of artificial intelligence. It focuses on creating new original content and learning to mimic or replicate the structure found within training data, that is the data used to educate an AI model. Now, this is super important. This does not mean simply, simply copying and pasting information. Instead, the AI learns. It learns patterns, structures, and features within the data, and then it generates new, similar data. For instance, let's consider this. An AI trained on a database of music. The AI won't just replay the songs it was trained on. Rather, it learns the patterns, melodies, rhythms, chord progressions presented in the training data, and then it generates new music. And this is really revolutionary. And in addition to music, AI tools like Dolly can create original art. In fact, most of the images in this particular lecture were created using Dolly. Thank you, Dolly. Now, let's look at natural language processing, or NLP. This is a subfield of AI that deals with the interaction between computers and humans using natural language. And when we say natural language, we're referring to, referring to the way humans communicate with each other, you know, sp through speaking English or Spanish, Mandarin, etc. This is opposed to programming languages or artificial languages such as Python or Java. Now, while of course coding languages are vital for communicating instructions to a computer, they're, they're not designed for everyday human communication. In fact, they even lack um, ambiguity and context dependence. So in LPs, the goal of them is to, are to build systems that understand and generate human language, enabling a more intuitive interaction with AI systems. So you'll see that tasks that they can do are things like language translation, uh, speech rec recognition, and important for us, text generation. Now I want to just briefly, very briefly mention this. Uh, transformer models, they truly did revolutionize natural language processing. In 2017, the field of N NLP really saw a big shift with the introduction of transformer models. And these models, such as the GPT series by OpenAI, are proficient in generating text that really mimics human language. So the term transformer comes from the model's unique structure, which involves transforming and processing this input data in a fundamentally different way compared to the traditional sequential models. In traditional sequential models, the input data is processed sequentially, that is one piece at a time. In contrast, transformer models analyze and capture the relationships among all the elements of the input data simultaneously. This allows them to understand the context and meaning which is what we do when we speak and write. And ChatGPT is an example 
of a transformer-based generative AI model. So the generative pre-trained transformer GPT model developed by OpenAI has achieved, you know, some really impressive results in generating coherent content. content. Um, you know, it's like having a conversation with an AI that understands and responds in a way that feels, you know, almost human. Now, before I end this lecture, I just wanted to mention briefly the formation of OpenAI. It was an important um, event. It was founded in 2015 by Elon Musk and Sam Altman and some other, some other tech leaders. Um, it is an artificial intelligence research lab made up of both for-profit and non-profit arms. Now, originally their objective was to really um, ensure that AI benefited humanity. That was kind of their lofty goal. And of course, it was AI that developed ChatGPT. But, but keep in mind at this point that ChatGPT is but one of many other generative AI models. And I've put up um, some examples here, but keep in mind that this information is always being updated as more tools are being released. So in conclusion, generative AI stands at the forefront of AI research and application. And you know, in future videos, I'm gonna take a deeper dive into generative AI and its application in various fields. Um, for now, you might wanna think about some big questions about artificial intelligence and how it differs from human intelligence. For example, can artificial intelligence ever truly replicate all aspects of human intelligence? You know, things such as creativity, intuition, emotional understanding. You know, is there a limit to what AI can achieve in terms of intelligence? Or can it potentially surpass human intelligence in all areas.